Hello, everyone. I'm the last I'm what is keeping you from heading out, so bear with me. <laughs> beer. I am your only obstacle to beer. It's, it's good. So first of all, um, we're going to talk a little bit about dinosaurs, power, influence, and authority in engineering and leadership. Um, when Steve invited me to, to Keynote, I was super excited about trying to figure out um, how to best use this time and, and your attention and focus. And going back and forth with him, we determined that a talk around exploring these subjects in, in engineering le leadership would be interesting. So hopefully it goes well. Um, before that, my plug, right? I work for a company called Splice. We're building, uh, <laughs> that's Mika who works with me in the back. Um, we're building a creative, a modern hub for the, creative hub for the modern musician, which is basically like GitHub, but for musicians. I lead and serve a distributed team around the Americas. Uh, I think we're 50 now. It's growing really fast. A year and a half ago, we were five. So fast growth. Um, and this talk started when someone, maybe or maybe not Steve, said, Juan, I think I want to go into engineering management. So I went like, why? The rest, Steve didn't, make, didn't say it, but I'm going to make it up. Because it's a conversation I, I tend to have with many people. So imagine, just imagine that this is the same engineer, Steve, asking this. I, I would like to help my team move forward. So I ask, why would management allow you to make change? So Steve says, because I would have authority. Not so fast. What kind of change are you looking for, Steve? Uh, I couldn't ask Steve. He was busy putting together a conference. <laughs> so I asked the internet. If you're an individual contributor or an engineer, what things you've tried to change in past organizations you've worked at but haven't been able to? So I was looking for things like process, pay, company strategy, communications, conditions, things that you can't as an IC, right? Um, and we got some interesting responses. Fred tried refactoring on maintainable systems using languages that other teams had, late claim to. An example, we are the Go team, and nobody else can write Go except us. So this is a process challenge. Um, Michael wanted to eliminate the divide between development, QA, and operations. Karen was being pushed by product managers to implement features at the cost of increased tech debt. I think this is very familiar for many of us, um, but that's another process. So let's explore authority. There's a definition of authority. It says that it's the power or right to give orders, make decisions, and enforce. This is the Colombian police. I'm from Colombia. But I'm a little punk, right? It's not as a, as a as an engineering executive that listens mostly to punk music. This is not a definition of authority I I like. This one is closer: the power to influence others, especially because of one's commanding manner or one's recognized knowledge about something. It's a little better. A plus authority. So what authority does an engineering have? And I'm going to caveat this with in a healthy organization, right? Because this, this doesn't always happen. But we can assume that authority, conventionally, is legitimate power. And that by hiring software engineers, you confer legitimate power over a technical domain. Right? This is Mostly any individual contributor. It can be a design. It can be testing. It can be any technical domain. It, it, can work, it works in a kitchen, right? Um, so this is a JavaScript conference. That's all the JavaScript I wrote last year. Um, I'm sorry, Mika. <laughs> 
an individual contributor we can define technical domain, right? That's, that's, um, that's probably what we can start with. But authority is not static. Experience, for example, can modify authority. So if you're experienced, you can get authority over your own time. What does this mean? If you're a junior engineer, it's likely that you, know, you don't have a lot of authority over your own time. Right? Everyone tells you what to do. Everyone tells you what to learn. As you earn experience, gain experience, you get more autonomy, right? Some more authority over your time, and sometimes you get authority over other people's time. Um, ideally, a staff engineer has ultimate authority over their own time, and they're working on long-running threads according to direction and strategy. Modifiers vary a lot depending on the company, the organization that you're in, the team, and even the manager that you report to. Does this, does this mean that you can change all the softwares? Maybe. It really depends how much your team trusts you and your scope of influence. So every time you're making decisions, technical decisions, you're trading on trust. Architectural decisions require a lot of trust, a lot more trust than implementation. Right? If you're working on a ticket that is low risk, that is not refactoring, rewriting the entire system, you don't need a lot of trust. If you are trying to rebuild the system, trying to take a new direction, then you probably require a lot of trust from your manager, from the organization, from your peers. How about manager? More JavaScript. The authority of a manager is mostly people and process. This is a definition that varies greatly around organizations. Some technical leads, some are managers. This is, but for this context, in, in, in generally in, in the organizations I like building, managers get explicit authority over people and processes. And if they're experienced, um, or senior, they get authority over strategy, or they start getting authority over strategic direction. In addition, managers lose autonomy. My time stops being mine. It starts belonging to my team, to my company. Um, if I showed you my calendar, you'd likely cringe. It is very, very hard to get time to think. But it is something that I give, I give my autonomy up in order to serve an organization. Mm. Can I change all the peoples and the processes? Maybe. It also depends on how much your team trusts you. What your scope of influence is. Or closure, right? So management has authority over software through people and process. Here, you could try to understand how me, as a vice president of engineering of a company, can have influence over the software we built through the organization I've built. I, ideally, should not be sending any pull requests to any code, because that's not the way I influence software. Um, but I can direct my team to, to take different approaches through my reporting um, sort of line. Management authority isn't enough all the time. Kevin complained, this is a longer response, but what I took out was that he had a problem where they had a problem. I'm not sure. That's not assumed. They had a problem where um, even the vice president of engineering who wanted to fix the higher level process could not twist enough of the right arms to get it through. So authority, or at least explicit authority, maybe is sometimes not enough. And authority closures don't tend to work the other way around. So an engineer. cannot change compensation 
or process directly, right? This is the, the, the closure flips. I can set compensation for the entire team or the process or whatever. We do waterfall at Splice. We don't. Um, but sometimes there is hope. Shale shared something really interesting. A success case. I only got a couple, but this one is very interesting. They were able to change the on-call rotation to team ownership. And it actually outlined steps on how they did it. Convince the organization that it is the right change. Train new hires on expectations. Estimated timeline to start co-holding pager and deleted the old rotation. So this highlights that we all have the opportunity to step up as leaders. This is a disclaimer. Leadership takes time, effort, and patience, so you must really care and want to make a change. But most, most importantly, it requires trust. So if you go back to the authority closures and you imagine that the VP set what the uncle rotation was, what Chael did was build trust. And this allowed him to pierce the closure, allowed them to pierce the closure. So it flipped everything, right? Uh, someone who is in a nested closure had the ability to redefine a process through trust. The requirements for this change were first getting buy-in to be empowered to make change, right? Getting trust from leadership. Um, getting an EM responsible for rolling out the change. Giving ICs that feel the pain a way to affect change and time to do it. And then there's a shout out to, I assume, a couple of team members that helped make this possible. So we go back. Steve says, one, I think I want to go into engineering management. But now you're saying, I don't need to be a manager to cause change. Not entirely. I do want to encourage you to be a leader, right? Because the intent of leadership is to deliver outcomes for the greater good. And we're part of an industry that has an abnormal amount of power to cause change in the world. I'm going to stop here for a moment because this is important. Working in technology gives you authority over the future of people at a never before seen scale. And knowing about your authority closures gives you the ability to focus that change. So yeah, stepping into management is a career change. Stepping up as an IC leader is a lower risk way of getting experience and building trust. Here's the ready. They tried to improve access to information around payments, improve access to projects, push transparency around promo decisions. It didn't work at all. But if you step into management, put a lot of work, a lot of effort, you can eventually make the change you want. Right? Um, it is worthwhile. So I want to invite you to explore it, right? We need more and better engineering managers. And no matter how hard you try, you will, someone's, you will be someone's worst boss. It's going to happen. Right, Will? Yeah. <laughs> but it will all be worth it when you become someone's best boss. And except you can't change it all. Thanks.
One problem that I see when it comes to engineering managers is that it becomes not about creating leaders, but creating a path to promotion and higher salary. And so I hear a lot of stories of people who have their worst managers. In a lot of cases, that manager didn't want to be a manager so that they can manage a group. It was just the ability to move forward in that same job. How do we stop that? Oof. Jen always with the easy questions. Um, I don't think you can stop it. I think, so we are, we are in an industry where we're fortunate where we can, that we can choose kind of where we work at, right? We're very privileged in that, in that fact. And to me, an indicator of a single track in engineering, to, so a single track in an engineering organization is an indicator of poor management, poor executive leadership. It's not even at, 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 the, at the lower level. If, if someone who is an executive doesn't recognize that once you move into management, you're basically a junior manager and you have to start again and you shouldn't be making more money. Maybe you have more responsibility, but you, you're, you're back to junior engineer. Maybe, right? And, and you have a lot more responsibility. So I don't think you can stop it f as an industry. I think you can stop it for yourself because switching tracks requires different interests. Uh, it requires the ability to, uh, as, as, as I mentioned, uh, give up your time, uh, want to coach, want to learn. Um, and especially as you're moving further along in, in engineering management, where you're stuck in that sandwich, where you really don't have a lot of power, just uh, you know, it's a little bullshit. And, and power is sort of, goes in both directions, because I recently started managing a team, and I'm very like privileged that I, I have a voice to leadership, but I think the most important part is advocating for those that you're managing. Um, and I think it's really important for people to understand the responsibility of engineering management, because it's not just the engineering side, but it's the people side. And in the wake of, you know, like, Community and like society used to be easy, like pre-Trump, but now you have to advocate for the people who are directly affected by ICE and, and the administration. And so you have to advocate for those people. And I think that has made becoming a manager even harder, or at least an effective manager even harder. Um, have You've been managing for quite some time. You've been in various VP engineering roles. like. I'm sure you've seen like a change in those responsibilities over the past few years. Yeah, so I, in, in the responsibilities of, of, of being an advocate, is that what you mean? Um, I, I, I don't know if necessarily it's changed. I think I've, be, I've become more aware of, of the impact, especially in technology. Like I, I used to work in kitchens before, and the impact that I had running a kitchen was direct. It was just the scope of the people who came to the restaurant. I could get someone sick or not. Um, but here, the scope of what I choose to spend my time and how I choose to focus the team and how I choose when I choose to speak up or not in different levels of the organization has a huge repercussions. So especially given how our industry is moving faster and faster and faster and towards more unregulated territory. Uh, like I outer space? In outer space. Hopefully some people move faster to outer space and leave us here. Yeah. Um, but it, is, it, it definitely is a necessary to be aware of the, of the impact beyond the team, the, the impact that your product has, the impact that, like for example, autoplay video. Why? It, it, it's right. You have the impact. You have the power to annoy millions of people, or not. Yeah. <laughs> or not. Or yeah. not. Um, so, do you have any final words for anyone out here who is, uh, I guess, 
inspired and want to become an engineering manager. Are there any like good books to read if you read books? I sometimes read books. I just started reading books, so yeah. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Uh, there's one book that is amazing, which is, and it's not because it, Camille is our friend, <laughs> but because it's really a great book, Camille's The Manager Path, not only if you're a manager, but also if you're an individual contributor and you would like to understand what your manager does all day or not, um, I, I would encourage you to read it. Yeah, I'm there's like sections one. for every level yeah. or path towards like being like, hopefully not Larry Ellison. Yeah, it's, it's, it's my favorite. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, let's give a round of applause for my pal Juan. Thank you very much. A and abolish ice. Abolish ice. Chinga la migra.